Hello, beautiful people. So in today's interview, we have a very special person that is a coach and who is in his clients. He is trying to embody the stoic practices uh, so that the clients can master their life. So the impact can be both in personal and professional level. So the name of uh, this uh, specialist is David Kaspar. And so please, David, tell us a little bit more about your bio, about your background, and so on. So please. All right. Well, Christos, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, I am a philosopher and a high performance coach. And for the last couple of decades, I've been teaching and researching in philosophy, and my specialization is, is in ethics. And one part of ethics that is very interesting to many people, and not just academics, is ancient philosophy, because ancient philosophers like Socrates, Aristotle, and today, especially the Stoics, were interested in trying to figure out what is the best possible life for a human being. And the goal of each of them was to live a uh, a eudaimonic life, a eudaimonic life, a life of flourishing, or what is sometimes called happiness. Mm -hmm. And so, interestingly, in my career, one one thing that I did was a little bit unusual for someone in academic philosophy, because we are very skeptical of personal development. I, at some point, I started to get into it myself, tried it out, and I started to notice I was writing more consistently. I was publishing more consistently. So I went from a skeptic to a believer. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, I noticed so many people are talking about stoicism. I thought some of the things that they were saying, okay, that's right on. Stoicism is good for uh, using it for success, but other things I thought were not so great. So I became very interested in this. And a couple of years ago, I was developing my own high performance system based on high performance coaches I've worked with, everything I've read about high performance, including high performance, uh, performance psychology, which is about how elite athletes become elite. And then all of a sudden, one day I realized most of the stuff I was coming up with was already in stoicism. So that's where high performance stoicism, my own system was born. And so it's a distinctive approach to help people to improve in their work and their life and especially in themselves. And so that's it. So this is innovative because we can say that we have philosophers and this is something innovative because you embody these principles and this researching and these practices not just to live good but also to become uh, influential and additionally to make a wealth because as we know most of philosophers they give themselves more so as to um, fix themselves to make an impact, but they don't pay attention in the wealth. So we are in the information age. We are in some period of time that happiness is also connected with money. It's actually it's interconnected. So yes, is it possible, David, um, to tell us when you have some clients and when you are starting with a client, what is the basic approach that stoic practices are helping so that a person is starting from a dysfunctional, maybe family, maybe from dysfunctional his own self, so that he is embodying these stoic practices and finally is healing. So what is like the shape, the structure of healing process related to the stoic practices? Uh, well, the the first thing that I help people with is a topic that, to me, it's amazing it's not in personal development 
as a main topic. So there's a lot of talk about being motivated, being inspired, and there's a lot of techniques in personal development, and many of which, if used properly, can be very helpful. But the big missing topic to me is, I think that everybody who wants to improve their life, they have to, every day, do the most important thing they know they need to do. Anything else in terms of mindfulness or say meditation, these those are important things to do. But if you're not starting off your coaching experience by in the first week, getting clear about what you need to do every day, doing it every day and doing it wholeheartedly, then I think there's something missing in the program because uh, I, I don't know about your experience, but my experience has been, I get involved in a certain personal development program. I do exactly what they say, and I am noticing certain improvements. I'm getting more confident, um, more calm, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I haven't done the main things I know I need to do every day. So that that's where I like to start my clients. And in terms of, in terms of the general approach, it's something everybody's familiar with today. It's called, it goes by many names. It's sometimes called atomic habits. Mm -hmm. It's some, sometimes called the 1% rule, or uh, it's called the slide edge by Jeff Olson, which is do it, do what you know you need to do a little bit and do it consistently. And then at some point raise, uh, raise the challenge for yourself uh, so that is the first thing I start with. And interestingly, the Stoics themselves are they're big on that. It's right there in Epictetus about start with something small and learn to discipline yourself in that, and then move on to things of greater value. That's a paraphrase of one of his quotes. Yes, this is highly correct and profoundly because consistency is creating the the habit, the habits and the vice versa. But also this is not so, it's true, but of course it's based also in the medicine because <clears throat> what happens is when we start doing something, let's say we start exercising someday, let's say it's passing one week and we exercise three, four times per week. Then within the mind, the neurons, are taking information. So as more information is coming to the mind, so these neurons are creating chemical reactions and they are connecting with this information with more and more neurons. So as more neurons with chemical reactions with the same identity, consistency about exercising, mm -hmm. is creating a network and after some time, it's going back to the subconscious and it's recorded. So when it's recorded, then it's happening the habit. And then we do it every day, exactly right, walking or driving. So what's about the consistency with, um, with the Stoics? How they are approaching this topic? How is their philosophy about the consistency and the atomic habits? Well, the issue of consistency, it seems like it might be overblown in Stoicism because basically they say consistency is so important that it makes a difference between what they call the sage or the wise man and everyone else. So they, they divide humanity into two clear categories Either you are a wise person, which they, they themselves, they say it's very rare. Socrates uh, didn't even make the list. So, uh, so the rest of us, at best, are making progress toward that. And so what's, what's fascinating about, and they, there's many points at which they talk about consistency, and you, it sounds like a formal concept. It sounds like there's no substance to it. But when you tease out a couple things in their philosophy, you see just how important consistency is. 
And so I'll just give you, I'll give you uh, one example of, or one area in which it's important because if you take the issue of say self-control, most people struggle with controlling their impulses in one area or another, and but in other areas, they're fine. So mentally, we think, well, I resisted, let's say, some snack that I don't care much about, but then put somebody puts something in front of me that I totally love, I, lo I lose control, right? So I give in to my impulses. I give in to the appearances. So one, one, one thing you're doing as a human to become better and better over time is simply you're being consistent about what you have self-control over, meaning you're, you're spreading it to more and more areas. So I, I mentioned that when we start working together, one of the things I'm going to have you do is let's get clear on what's the most important thing you need to do to live the great life that you want. And we're gonna go into more details than that, including how you see yourself five years from now and the connection between what you're doing now and that time period in the future. So that would be the first area we're gonna start on consistency. But then we're, uh, over the course of working together for 12 weeks in the in my program, high performance stoicism coaching, you're going to try to at least start in other areas, but then you're simply duplicating the process. Meaning you're aiming, you know, you know what you need to work on in terms of, let's say your distractions. We're gonna start on reducing your, uh, your distractions, but then over time apply it to other areas. So, so the, uh, that so the substance that might seem to be missing there when we talk about be consistent what fills it in is the habits and minds mind states that you want right on point if we take a little bit to the medicine we can say that when we have emotional eating means that we have linked emotionally first moments that we were sad we were depressed and then we just ate something a snack a sweet because we wanted to feel better so repeatedly as we had difficult moments depressive moments and we just thought that the last time that i ate sweet i, I felt a little bit better so when the mind is creating this pattern so yes, then we have the emotional eating. <laughs> but after some time, what is happening with emotional eating is that the instant moment that the person is feeling the urge to eat emotionally is just a high increase instant of the dopamine. So this person most of the times cannot handle the high increase of the dopamine in the blood that is connected subconsciously with the exact moment that he's eating and he's feeling better. So yes, most of the people cannot just reduce or stop the bad habits of, let's say, emotional eating. So when it comes to emotional eating, when it comes to other addictions, maybe porn also, what is teaching? What is the main source of teaching and application that you, of course, encounter and teach to your clients so that they can break these patterns, the links, so that they feel free and they engage more habit, more healthy habits? Well, great question. Uh, so the, the general approach I take is to, so there's a, there's a thesis I have about all of our little problems. And that could be, you could say, I have a problem with emotional eating. I have a problem with, I have a porn addiction. Uh, I have a problem with asserting myself. Mm -hmm. I say that all, every psychological trait is non-isolable, meaning you can't isolate it from other things. 
And that's why if someone is new to personal development, it could be confusing because I, I bought a book on discipline, but then it's asking me questions about, uh, about my self image or it's, or it's telling me to write a set of rules. And I'm wondering, well, what does it have to do with discipline? So when, when you, uh, so the, the person, and there are cases where people in, uh, psycho psychology books and personal development books, they do a really good job, but here's why the, here's where the confusion comes in. If you want to work on, let's say your health, uh, being more productive, being better socially, the way to approach all of these things is through a single system that covers them all. And one thing that, that uh, when I look back on it now, it's kind of surprising, surprising that I didn't think about it before, but in my system, the cardinal virtues, the fundamental virtues of prudence, courage, self-control, and justice, if you think about everything you're doing in your whole life along the lines of these cardinal virtues, then you start to see how all these little things are connected. So any, any good personal development system or good coaching program is going to be multifactorial. There's not going to be just one thing the person is going to do to help you because a number of things have to come together in harmony. And one of, the, one of the goals of life that the Stoics tell us is there for us. They say, your goal of life, you don't get to choose it. It's been chosen by your human nature. And the most popular one is live, live according to nature. But there's another one that says, live uh, harmonize or come into harmony with nature or come into harmony with reality. So, so yes, and here's the thing. If somebody comes to you and says, look, I have these seven problems. How do I deal with them? Well, that's just the problems that are on their mind. Even if you get solve those problems by the end of your time working with them, new ones are going to come up yeah. that they didn't recognize because they were grappling with these. So that's why it's best to do as the Stoics did. Think about your psychology as a whole, and for example, and so just for example, the my inability to refrain from eating a beautiful slice of apple pie, right? That that is connected in some way with my inability to stand up for myself at work. And so even if I don't see the connection, one one point of the of uh, thinking about these as the Stoics would would be to show, okay, improvements in one area will have Im mean improvements in others. And so that's the general approach I take. That's fine. So during all of my life, we speak about, like now I'm 39, we speak about like 35, 36 years old, three years. I was having commitment issues so that to build my body. Maybe I was not fat, I was normal with small obese, but I was not capable after going to gym some few days to be a habit. This was this seemed to be some inability of mine to link something good or to link something not good. <clears throat> so that now that sometime before I had some emotional eating issues, I had put in my vision board a body of a person I like. So I wanted to have similar body. So when I, I decided to link mostly for this issue, for the emotional eating, not with pleasure, but from the opposite side, with the opposite of pleasure, mm -hmm. I found that, look, if you will eat, you are one step far away from your goal, from this great body. And how will you feel if you will go, if you will achieve this body? You will feel great. You will feel confident. Mm -hmm. So then I started becoming more habit, slowly, the linking to the pleasure, first, of having the body I love, and secondly, linked with, with the opposite of pleasure, 
that I will be this person that I always didn't like in my life. The person that didn't have the body he wanted. So in 2020, I made a commitment and I say, enough is enough. Here's the, here's the mood board. I know that sometimes I will have some setbacks and I will not be able to follow the diet, not be able to exercise. But since then, become a habit. And this is from the personal development books. First person that, if I remember good, that mentioned this was Anthony Robbins in At Least Your Giant Within. So that he mentioned it, link to pleasure and link to opposite of the pleasure. So did, do you, uh, David, embody the linking to pleasure or the opposite of pleasure to habitual patterns to your clients that you want to destroy? Well, it's something that uh, it's definitely something that we discuss in terms of how would you feel if you get this, if you achieve this objective, and how would you feel if you actually don't? Because how long have you wanted to do this? Let's say have a you know be in great shape, uh, have a great body, and be strong and so forth. So that that definitely does come up into it. The the part that I like to focus on in order to get the person moving has to do with an important distinction that the Stoics make between what is in your power and what is out of your power. And so the giving opening a discussion of what really is within your power and what is within your, without outside of your power is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, when we talk about, for example, going to the gym, stepping into the gym, and some sometimes for some people, that's the first step. Okay, and then ask what's in your power and what's not in your power. And the same goes for working on their body. Once we see that, well, you could do the exercise, but does that mean you're gonna see the results as you want them? And they'll say, no. So you start to see, and, and there's one question that's behind uh, my whole approach on this, which is very important in Stoicism. What is its nature? So understanding what's involved in bodybuilding is important for doing, doing it well and having the proper perspective on it when you go into it. So, the, so I would say in, in answer to your question, I want them to see, okay, what you what you do or an objective you have, such as I'm going to do an exercise routine today, you're it's important to see that as being independent of what the outcome is. So all the pressure you could say is on the doing, what's within your power, and very little pressure on the outcome, seeing the results I want. And so that gives people a proper perspective so they can gradually get better and better. So, But of course, because you are coaching them, they, uh, one of the best like property, um, of the best benefits of the coaching is the accountability. Right. If a person wants to start building the body by his own, and when he has not good habitual patterns, mm -hmm. there are many possibilities that he will, she will not be able to to follow this uh, plan of uh, bodybuilding, right. building his body. But when there is a coach, for instance, you, David, they are accountable to you. So, you know, they know that every week they will have the session, they will discuss, and of course, there will be the homework. So this is a catalyst for people to have a great improvement and do what they want and destroy habitual patterns that are holding them back from their dreams. So that a coach, and this is why it's coach, because it's keeping from one side accountable. So when you have accountability to some person, then yes, it's like with maths. When we go to school, we will make a test. We will mm -hmm. make raise the hand so as to speak and to solve the equation. So imagine how it will be if we would just starting learning by our own maths probably we will not be capable to be good in mathematics so this is coming uh, the benefit the huge benefit nowadays of the coaches so as to create as we call it superpower supermans supermen 
with superpowers because the coaches did the work and can give the accountability to their clients. So, David, if you would like so to wrap up this uh, beautiful and uh, very insightful interview, if you wanted to mention um, some principle and some, some insight, some very useful insight about how a person that wants to work with you and to break habitual patterns, how can a person start doing this? Well, one of the things that I I tell people to do uh, to start off, and this is this is part of my coaching, I ask them to read just 15 minutes of Stoicism a day. And so one of the big three, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, or Seneca. Mm -hmm. The reason I do this is because, so I'm a philosopher, and I think every human being, every everybody, you and everyone else has a bit of a philosopher in you. So one goal of the program is by the end of the program, you're going to create your own philosophy of high performance that's tailored to you. And one of the reasons to do this is because my, if you look at top 10, uh, top 10 tips or top 10 principles, there's a whole series of these on YouTube. If you have Michael Jordan, if you have, Dan Pena, if you have Tony Robbins, you'll notice one thing. They all have different rules. They all have different things that are a priority. So I am starting, what, one of the features of my program is I want you to form your own high performance philosophy because you'll be much more likely to follow that than something I just give you and say, that is the best. Uh, so so that's and so the way to one way to start that is okay the readings but also start writing down your own principles to act by start coming up with even things you tell yourself so when i started off in personal development and i was unhappy with my life i came up with that was yesterday just a little thing to say that was yesterday. And then anytime I started to do something I was doing that I was unhappy with, I said, no, that was yesterday. I don't do that anymore. Find out things for you that work and keep mo moving forward. And so that, that, that I think is a good, a good set of ideas that people can start with to really make improvements. Yes, because each person is unique and unique is also the personality and all the knowledge we obtain so mm -hmm. that we can have as you mentioned it our own perception and perspective right so if you the audience want to work you find value and you want to work with uh, david uh, david how can they find you people in the audience if they want to work with you okay so uh, if you want to work with me you can join my group uh, Stoic Practices for Success on Facebook, or you can email me, and the the email address for my uh, coaching is d k a s p a r, right like right there on the screen at highperformancestoicism.com. It's it's all there in the name of the system, High Performance Stoicism. And to add that uh, David has uh, the profile public in Facebook. So everything, every day he's posting very valuable content. And additionally, you can be friends and uh, you can, of course, you can join his group because it's visible. And yes, you can hit a friend request and have a talk with him, with David, and see what's going around. So uh, thank you very much, David, for today. Uh, it was my pleasure to host you and to exchange very, very useful uh, information, insight about uh, the Stoic practices and uh, how they are being embodied uh, in the personal and professional life. So from Greece, we are wishing you um, a great evening. And from David? America. Uh, yeah. You're from America, yeah. <laughs> uh, America, uh, have a great afternoon and thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It was my pleasure. So wishing you all 
to have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye.